Today, we will talk about the basics of working in RDWorks 8, what are the features, and how to configure laser cutting and engraving. Hi everyone, this is Verma. Let's get started. Cutting and engraving control panel settings. Each individual file element can be assigned its own color and cutting or engraving settings. For instance, we want to create a rectangular keychain made of 3mm thick acryl with the Verma.com inscription. Let's create four elements. 1. The inscription itself. 2. A rectangle, that is, the body of the keychain. 3. A thin contour band around the perimeter of the rectangle. And 4. The hole under the keychain ring. The inscription is to be engraved, so let's assign it a black color. The contour of the rectangle will be made with contour engraving, so we will assign it a blue color. The rectangle and the circle should be cut out. Let the rectangle be red and the circle be green. Why use different colors for the rectangle and the circle since we need cutting in both cases? This is because we need to assign the right sequence for these operations. Work sequence. If we first cut a rectangle and then a circle, then the part that was already cut may fall under the pressure of the air coming from the nozzle of the laser head. That being the case, we won't be able to cut a circle and even more so, engrave an inscription. So, first, we need to perform all the operations inside the layout and cut out the rectangle at the end. To set the sequence, simply drag and drop layers directly in this window. Tasks are performed from the top down. First, we need to engrave the inscription and the contour, then cut a hole for the keychain ring, and finally, cut a rectangle. You can also assign a numeric value to each task in the Priority bar below in the Quick Settings panel. This panel is located here for ease of use. You can see what speed and power parameters are assigned to each particular layer when you select it in the control window or by clicking on the desired item directly in the workspace. Here, you can also adjust these parameters without opening the full settings for each layer. We will still need the full settings window though Let's start with engraving the inscription by adjusting each layer sequentially. To open the full engraving and cutting settings window, double-click on the layer you want to adjust in the control window. Engraving settings. You can switch between layers directly in this window by selecting the required color in the left column. The parameter library is located at the top, in which you can select pre-made settings for various materials of different thicknesses as well as save your own settings. Please note that these parameters are directly related to the power of the laser tube and other machine parameters. Therefore, the best solution is to select and save the parameters for each material on your specific machine with all your input data. We will be selecting the settings for Watson 1290ST laser machine with a 100W laser tube. Let's go back to the settings. There is an indicator in the form of non-clickable color of the layer you are currently working with, located under the parameter library. The settings are located below. Is output has two values, yes and no. This parameter determines whether the layer is active or not. Turning the layer off is useful, for example, when making multi-layer complex layouts. In this case, we will set this parameter to yes for all layers. The next parameter, speed, defines the speed at which the task for this layer will be performed. The relation between speed and power of the engraving will determine its depth. The lower the speed and the higher the power, the deeper the engraving. Since we are now setting up the engraving of the inscription and we have a rather powerful laser tube, we will set the speed to a maximum value of 700 mm per second. The advantage of the Watson 1290ST laser machine is its frame design, so this machine does not shake and yields high engraving quality even at the highest speeds. If you select the default checkbox, the speed value will be equal to the speed set on the control panel. You can then select the blasting mode with two options, yes or no. This parameter is relevant if the compressor is connected to the control system, then it can work in conjunction with the controller and programmatically turn air blasting on and off. Yes value activates blasting during operation and no value disables it for this layer. You can then set the required number of repetitions. 
In most cases, however, it is better to do the work in one repetition. The next item, Processing Mode, enables you to select one of these modes – Scan, Cut, Dot or Pen. Depending on the selected mode, some of the subsequent settings in this window will change. By the way, if the current layer is a bitmap layer, its color will be specified as BMP. In this case, it can only be processed by engraving. The dot and pen modes are rarely used. If you want to learn about them, write a comment below, and we will make a separate video on them. Since we need classic engraving for this layer, choose the Scan mode. Next to the mode selection, there is the Advanced button, but we won't go into Advanced setting for now, as we don't need them for this task. You can set the power percentage in the next sector of this settings panel. You can do this for two working heads at once if you have a dual head laser machine. This machine is only fitted with one working head, so we don't need to check the box next to the settings for the second working head. For laser engraving, it is better to set the minimum and maximum powers at the same level. The engraving power is usually set in the range from 10 to 30 percent. Since we have set the maximum engraving speed, we need a higher power, so we choose 30 percent. If you check Default, the parameters will be imported directly from the machine control panel. As for the selection of speed and power parameters, if you change the power even by 1 to 3 percent, you will already spot the difference. As for the speed, when selecting this parameter, it is advisable to use an increment of 20 to 50 units to notice the difference. All these checkboxes represent additional advanced settings, which are not necessary for standard engraving, so we will leave them for a separate video. We will also not focus on overstriking and leave the default unprocess value. The scan mode determines the direction and whether the engraving is single-sided or double-sided. There are four options to choose from. 1. X unilateralism. The laser head moves along the gantry along the X axis, but engraves in one direction only. X swing. The movement also occurs along the X axis, but the engraving will be bidirectional, respectively. Y unilateralism and Y swing work similarly, but along the Y axis. We recommend using X swing for regular engraving as the best one. Single-sided engraving may be required when there are high requirements for accuracy and precision. Advanced settings such as scan mode will be omitted in this video as well. Let's move on to the interval value. If you select X swing in the scan mode field, the laser head will be moving along the X axis but the gantry and the laser head will be moving along the Y axis, step by step, so the interval value is just the size of this increment. The default value is 1. The larger this value is, the faster the engraving will be performed, but it is important not to allow gaps or artifacts when engraving due to high interval. The smaller this value is, the more detailed the engraving will be. Remember that there is no point in setting this value lower than 0.01, because the diameter of the focused laser beam cannot be less than 0.01 mm. To fully unlock the software potential, the machine must be perfectly aligned and a short focus lens is required. In addition, the laser beam diameter is also affected by the power of the laser tube. You can learn more about this in our video on how to choose the laser tube power. At this point, you can finish the basic engraving setup. Let's move on to creating a contour engraving. Contour engraving. Contour engraving is contour cutting at low power settings. Such work can be done by engraving too, but it will take a lot longer. So let's move on to the settings. Keep the yes value in the is output field. The speed for this type of operation can be set to 150 millimeters per second. Also keep the yes value for blasting parameter. Select Cut in the Processing Mode field and proceed to the power settings. With laser cutting, unlike engraving, the difference between minimum and maximum power values makes a difference. The minimum power is also known as angular power because the laser machine cannot move continuously if it has to change the motion vector drastically, so some delay occurs at the corners, which can cause excessive heat exposure, leading to overburning at the point of change of direction of the laser head. The minimum power setting avoids overburning. 
Since we are adjusting the settings for contour engraving, not cutting, the difference between the maximum and minimum power will be slight. Let's set 10% for the minimum and 15% for the maximum power. This completes the basic settings for contour engraving. This is Verma. See you in the new videos.